see the size of that bloody thing. I want to kill the cursed thing. He is on this ship, which means that we will never leave it. The devil is real. I wanted to ask you, um, I we've talked about this previously, but I wanted to ask you about bringing a character like Clemens to life within the world of Dracula, where we've never seen him before, and all the the history and um, aspects of of his life that you bring to this role, which you did beautifully. Can you talk about uh, creating that within the history of a, a mythology like this? Uh, well, the the beautiful thing about this chapter of Dracula, as you know, um, is that it's it is uh, both gives you detail but it also there's a lot that it doesn't uh give you and and it has to do with with the crew and who's on board and so there's a lot of liberties that you can take as a filmmaker um and and the writers here to to create these interesting or, or cool characters and backstory and so that was a huge part of like just talking to andre and the producers going into this about Clemens and, and and really just kind of nailing for me even though it's not um, you know it's not uh, it doesn't hit you over the head right like it's not one of those didactic sort of things but it, he is a black Cambridge educated doctor and there is something about that you know the, the research we had to do to make just to just to find these 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 men they, they existed you know these are men who went and studied and and then couldn't rise beyond their station because of the color of their skin. So um, so that was first and foremost, just to make the, the authenticity of it. Clemens is an outsider. And you know, when we're talking about Dracula, um, he is an outsider in society. He's a, he's a monster, but he is the other. He represents the other. On this ship, Clemens, Anna, and Dracula, they represent the other. And I think there's something in there that, that they see in each other as well um, that was important to just highlight and, and, and bring out. And so, Well, and one thing that I, I really liked about this too was the fact that in, within, the, within this film, Clemens finds a family in the worst time he could have found them, but he is accepted in, and and respected because of of his intelligence and his his uh look on um, to what's going on and his outlook on the world which i thought was really beautifully um spoken about within yeah, the character he 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 is he becomes that's the journey of the crew like i think they become that they need it's they become it out of necessity though i don't know i think if clemens had sailed with them longer maybe possibly but they they have to learn to lean on each other and they learn that everything else falls away, right? Like the evils of the world, the things that Clemens has had to walk through and see living in the skin that he lives in. Um, he's confronted with that when he walks onto the Demeter, when he steps on board the Demeter. Again, he's an outsider. And so, but by the end of it, that level of respect, they have to lean on each other in order to survive. Getting, not only getting this ship, to where it needs to get to, because you still have to sail the ship, you know. Right. But then there's there's just surviving this evil in Dracula that that um, that they see and that Clemens is always seen, I think, in the world. But now it's it's the physical representation of that, and it's scary well, as hell, you know. Oh well, and that's the other part of it, which I really loved was mm -hmm. you're you have you're the man of science. You have, and then you have the believers and the su the superstitious men on board. Dracula doesn't care about any of that. He don't give a flying <laughs> nothing about none of it. Dracula is Dracula is a he's a calculating monster, but I think he understands it. I think he gets it. Yeah. You know, I think he 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 knows what Anna's place. He knows Clemens, but so I think he is toying a bit with that, and which makes Dracula in this sense he's different. I think he's always been calculating and, and very smart in other versions, but Dracula in this version is is he is a monster. But I think the crew uh, might might and as Anna warns them, don't don't mistake it. He's not just this mindless animal. He is a calculating uh, 
fate. Monster. Yeah. Evil, yeah. And yeah. so you have to be, and Clemens understands that, you know. Well, and I love, it's basically Dracula within this is corruption. He yeah. is, he as Clemens says over and over again, it's an infection, it's an infection. Mm -hmm. And in a way, it, it, it rots the boat. Mm, and and it does. And and it's such a a well played way of doing it. And I I wanted to ask you really quickly uh, about within this film, just some of the scenes you have and everybody has are just traumatic. Like mm -hmm. they are uh, just beat the hell, water everywhere. Yeah. How was this <laughs> just everywhere? How was this to film? Like what was the most challenging scene for you? Or can you talk about that? Um, well, first I just want to talk about what you just said about the infection. Because I think that's a very astute like point. Like there is an infection on board, and Clemens understands the infection in the sense of what it is, but he doesn't understand that the infection is it the infected this ship that is leading us to hell, you know. Yeah. And and the it, it's crazy. John John Briona's character he he talks about how rats are a normal thing on a ship, and once they're gone. Yeah. which is weird to think that's, about. That's a that bad means, thing. That's a problem. There's something <laughs> off about this. And so I just thought it was, it's just such an interesting um, dynamic. But um, just to your point about the, 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 the filming of it, I think the, the like you said, we, we were beat to hell <laughs> making this <laughs> thing, but it was fun. It's a, it's a privilege. I mean, the rain sequences, I think at the end were probably the most challenging because we, we were literally freezing. Oh, had yeah. to be in water, had to get out of it, had to wait to the setups and the cannons that they, the waves and how it, it just was, was intense. And I just remember Andre, <laughs> I come off and Andre would be in his poncho sitting there. He's like, should we go again? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah. No, I'm like, whatever you want, man, this is why we're here. Like, let's, let's do this thing. Like we can't half ass it. We can't half step this. This is an important journey and and he was about that the cast and crew was about that um I, which i love like we all were everybody was all in you know we wanted to make the best return to dracula um that well, we could. as a fan um i have yeah. to say well done you so good amazing film thank so you so thank you i appreciate it good to see you again good to see you bye something ripped about the animals all the livestock this looks like a bite. Search the ship everywhere. Evil is on board. Powerful evil. First of all, um, this is the a, a very unique version of Dracula uh, that we, you know, I've never seen one quite like this that is such a balance and of of animalistic rage and also cunning and sophistication and you brought a lot of grace and visceral you know yeah. animal to this thing <laughs> can you talk about finding the balance for how he moves and acts in this well in general these movies so different to what we used to see about Dracula. And it's more like a beast, more like an animal. Of course, we can see at the end a little of Dracula, the classic Dracula, but only a bit. But in general, it's like a, a action horror movies. It's not the classic uh, stylized and sexy Dracula. It's, it's an animal. so. I I I thought it was so interesting to make this uh, version of Dracula because it's very original, very different. But yes, uh, in the beginning, we have something like more uh, weak and more fragile. And for me, it was so beautiful to to find this point to to make the the change. Uh, but yes. Uh, when the creatures start feeling stronger and more confidence, uh, the game start changing and it's step by step more evil, more bad, more demonic, enjoying uh, killing 
uh, the victims and see his face uh, is like more sadic. Uh, so to go to the to to be the most demonic and bad guy, but starting from something more weak, it's beautiful as an actor to to work in that and to to make the the weak version and. I don't know, but uh, we everybody knows Dracula so much. We we know him from the beginning of the times. So for me, it was not a, a big uh, challenge to compose because we already have a lot of information. Sometimes I I I had to create a a creature from zero to everything. So this time you have less information and it's hard to make solid but in this in this movie i was doing dracula i was a lot of years thinking about dracula and and you can feel whatever he is doing no matter no matter what he's doing is sure of itself because he know he's stronger he is immortal he can change for mist or for a bat or for a wolf is so powerful. So in the moment he starts not being so weak, he's basically uh, gaming, playing with his uh, victims. So it's for me it's so fun, uh, this character. To... So, yeah. Well, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I had to ask about this because within the film, um, it seems like Dracula infects the ship and the people, like an infection. And I was curious about how that played into your performance within him as sort of like a virus and also just a, a parasite in how he acts. And, and well, uh yeah it's it's complicated because i think there's a, a similarity of how it start to infect the, the people with fear so i think that in, in the boat travels it's easy to to start getting infections and and there are animals there's a lot of things so this is the worst animal uh, is Dracula, is the, the worst creature. So everything that it's bad is it come from Dracula. So I think it's a way of uh, include something more. It's infecting of fear, infected of this virus. And it's a, well, in one moment, you can even see one of the actors almost becoming a a vampire so because we everybody know that the vampires infect people with a with his bite and you can become another vampire so this thing is everything the same i think it's it's like a plague yeah it's like a plague so uh, of vampires. so um one thing i wanted to to ask you about was in in the co in the costume in that makeup you are getting hit around pretty hard and there's a lot of water <laughs> yeah. how how was that to film on that set with the amount of just physicality and that environment for you it had to be tough yes, it's, hard. <laughs> it's hard it's always hard to get uh, 5 6 hours of makeup uh, so you start the shooting with your energies a little low because you've been uh, a lot of time on that. And you need to be ready for the makeup artist and helping. After that, you need to start killing people, jumping <laughs> and doing a lot of physical things. So even with that, they now uh, in start uh, spreading a lot of water, everything is wet, everything is a bit cold because now it's in the night, 
you're with for a lot of hours. It's a very physical uh, uh, desafio, uh, uh, edge, uh, a very challenge. Yes, a very big challenge always. But when you have passion, and I always had for making movies, it's like I do uh, things that I cannot do out of shooting. My friends, my girlfriend, all the people that went to shootings with me, they they say, how can you do all these hours of doing that? And after that, you're more like weak, like you can, yeah, yeah. I'm more lazy, more other things. But with that, I'm always ready till my body say no. And, and it's very little things that I have to say, today I'm done. We need to stop and we keep tomorrow. I used to say that three times in my in my entire career. Wow. So I I don't even understand how how strong I can be with this motivation. But yes, it's, it's long days, long nights of shooting, and and I'm here. You, you just love what you do. <laughs> another take, another take. And I'm, I'm always, when I'm finishing a take, automatically, I'm always walking to the to the first because I'm always ready to do another one. It's something that I have, like mm, a military. <laughs> like I'm here. You're a soldier. <laughs> yes, I'm here to work. And... Yes, I'm tired, but I'm ready to start the next take. So it's that's amazing. It's passion, passion. Well, I I have one last question for you, and um, I've I've followed your career as have a lot of my uh, cohorts uh, and and fellow fans, and you've done so much amazing stuff in the creature world. Like just you have a style that you bring to your characters that it's just gorgeous. But I wanted to ask, because you've played demons, you've played vampires now, you've played zombies, all kinds of things. Um, what would you say is your favorite style of monster that you've played uh, that you find you just love doing it? Well, I I love so much uh, some of the creatures I did, but not only for the result maybe for the proceed for the time of shooting for the experience it makes me love uh, for example mama uh, that it was uh, an amazing experience with all the crew and for me it was so beautiful experience so i i i have a lot of love for mama but for example medeiros the wreck movie you know wreck movie okay. oh yeah well, oh yeah <laughs> it's yes, a terrifying yes. film <laughs> it was one of the easiest monsters because we shoot it the one my part was shooted in one day and was very not improvised but was so fresh we enjoy it and all the succeed that this role had and all the people loving that makes me feel an amazing love for this creature for this role so i cannot uh, choose uh, it's like so, choosing your favorite uh, child <laughs> yeah girls girl, woman style monster woman style because mama uh, yeah but for example it's so beautiful the design of crocodile men. We have not much time to to do. It's like very little scenes in the Conjuring, but I would love to play this character for a spin-off or whatever, because I think it's so beautiful to be in so little part. It's like we need more of that. I need more. I love it. So, but this character gives me more liberty of making something more comedian, more uh, fun, uh, 
and BPUs and a lot of things that, uh, that we have no more space to explore. But I, I, I think it could be amazing. But time by time, day by day, I'm, I'm, I wanted to play more uh, roles with more story, with more emotions, with more weakness to, yes, it's... To give you more meat to, to the, meat to the role, more meat to the role. More meat, uh, the action is good, I enjoy, but less action and more uh, self uh, inside, uh, I don't know, emotions. I think it's so beautiful to, to work with the creatures in this way, because the most of the time the creatures are for killing people, but when you give a little bit of space, emotional space, you make the creatures grow as so much. So well, sir, I I I have to let you go, but uh, thank you so much for bringing Dracula to life in a way I've never seen him, and as you can see, I love Dracula. <laughs> Yeah. quite a lot <laughs> so, yeah. um so yeah. thank you so much for um for making this new version and uh continued success in what you do and um you make beautiful monsters what can i say thank you very much uh, i feel a lot of love 